Hey guys and welcome to uh, loading a JSON file straight from the web into your Unity project and how uh, to manipulate that. The most easiest and efficient way to do this. That's what you're going to learn here in, in this video in just a moment. So here's my JSON file that I'll be loading in from this URL. This is a legit, legit URL. You guys can go to it. Um, to practice with this JSON file if you'd like to also in my back I'm j in the back here I'm just loading up a brand new unity project. So that's all that's going on there So be ready because my unity is kind of slow um, And I'm going to show you how you can Retrieve one data here or this data or the list of ball data that is here this um or similar JSON file like this is what I use for one of the games I have out there that has a store um, which is called the ball shop where I sell bowling balls in that store some of them is free and some of them is not free and then they all have a price a weight a size and a texture image on them and I can make all that changes right here in the JSON and it will happen on the phones or or computer of anyone that's playing my app so that is mainly the main reasons you would want JSON if you're hosting it online anyway so that everyone playing your game will access the same file so you can make changes, dynamic changes to your game. Maybe change your entire theme uh, when, it's when it's a certain holiday. You know, you change, you, you change your look of your game to maybe a Christmas theme or whatever the holiday is. Um, and same, I have loading screens here. I can probably change the images because my game is programmed to loop through this loading screen and pick a random one when the game is loading. So I can probably change this out and make these all um, Christmas trees and Santa Claus around, you know, winter time, right? So I'm going to show you guys now how you can get that set up in your game. So you can also make your changes to your game uh, dynamically straight from, you know, this JSON file and and a good work flow for this is I have a second JSON file, right? A really small one that um, the game reaches out to the internet every time it loads and simply checks the version number. So what I do is I would make changes to this file and then changes to the version number on the really small one that every time the game loads up, it reaches out to. And as long as that version number is incorrect, it will download a new set of data from the J uh, JSON file. Because you don't want them downloading the data over and over for no reason. Anyways, your time is important. My time is important. Enough of my jabbering and j jittering and whatever. And let's get into this JSON. Um, loading your JSON data straight from the web. So I'm going to create a folder. Now I'm going to call it uh, scripts. I'll create what we're going to need. We're going to need two files. We're going to need a file that will mimic the JSON file that you have on the URL. So it's not going to be a JSON file. It's going to be a file that mimics it like response is going to be responsible for. It has to have basically the same data structure. And I'll show you what that means. So I'm going to call this my uh, JSON data class cool beans um and now to, to structure this this is going to be um like i said the same data as as this and i'll show you how that works i'll just bring this off to the side here all right so once we have cleaned up the script and we only have the class uh, what you need you also need a system a namespace so we'll go ahead and bring that in by using using <laughs> using using and then you need to also serialize and that's why we add the system uh, namespace but you have to serialize this class okay um, before we can get the balls we are also going to need another class that handles the properties of the ball so we'll go ahead and we'll make that right now and likewise, it does need to be um, serialized. So I'll just uh, duplicate this, right? And then this will be my ball list. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. 
So, so now that we have this class here to retrieve these data, we have to give them the exact, exact same name. So um, this is a number because there's no quotes and this is clearly a string. Let's just use this player name. We'll forget about version for now. But player name, which is a we're going to say public string and then the exact same name. That's why we're using serializable here. It has to match once we use the unity um, JSON, JSON utility, and that's what we're going to be using. So the datas do have to match. That's what I meant when I told you that this script is going to have to reflect the actual data. So now I need variables for all of these matching their data type within my ball list. And then, as you can guess, I will have to create Within this JSON class, not the ball class, ball list class, within this class, I have to create all the data I need, right? So I can say another uh, public, uh, public here, and then what I'm going to send will be a list, and then that list will be, nope, just a list would be the type of this, if that makes sense to you. And then the name, just like I told you before, does have to match. So the name of this variable now will be boom, and I'm set. The only issue here is I do need um, system.collection for my list to work. So it's collection dot, uh, I think it's generic. Great, so now my list work. Follow me so far. So in here, um, it's an empty list. So in here, I just need these variables and I'll be all set and all good to go. All right, so see what I did? I have created variables for all of these, a the free weight, size, uh, image, price, description, name, matching their data type. Yes, the weight was actually a string, it's quotations. The size is a, a number, and so is the price, so those are integers. I made that list, just called it ball list, and in here, it's also uh, serializable It's a, in its own class. And then here, I just had to create the public string for the player name that I'm going to retrieve, which is ball shop. And then I create a list, which is this data set called ball which is this which makes sense because inside of this ball inside this list are data sets of these properties so that is just the structure you have to do for this to work and when we're done with this script we should be able to accurately now retrieve the player name and the entire list of balls if i wanted to create um, retrieve the uh, the loading images, I would do the same thing. Just create another class down here and then create the list up here, which would only have one property really, and that would be images or image. Cool? All right. So now I can just do that right now and show you what I mean anyways. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So I've created another public class. I just call it loading m. And then it only has one uh, item here in its image. Notice that these variables do have to match exactly with these variables. The name and conventions do have to match. These two classes that I gave, the, the list themselves, do not have to match. But then the actual list variable does have to match. So let me go ahead and create one now for the load and image. So load an image, images, this, like I said, has to match. So that will be this. And then what data is actually in it is this. So now let's create the script that will actually do stuff with this data. This first script that you created will just sit there within your script folder. Um, you don't have to touch it. Once you set it up, you don't have to touch it. So let's go ahead and actually create our, I guess, JSON um, controller. Why not? And I'll double click to open that up. 
I'm just going to create the URL variable. This is just going to be a quick test. Um, since we have images within our JSON file, uh, there is actually something else you should do. But just to test it for right now, I'm just going to show you a quick way to do it. So public string. So I can do this in the editor if I can spell. Um, and it's going to be JSON URL. Right? Um, I don't care about the update. I'll make a private um, variable here. A private function, sorry. And this will be what I'm going to use to process my uh, JSON data, right? And it's simply going to take the string. Um, let's call it, let's call it underscore URL. That's what it's going to take and then do everything I need to do. Oops. right there so then in my start function right i will simply be sending that url as soon as the game starts up and so it can do what it needs to do so like i said before i'm going to be using what's called the unity um json utility and it's so easy to convert stuff because your data has been serialized and it's synchronized with the actual um, JSON data on the server. So the name and the name of the variables all match and everything else matches. So this makes it so much easier, right? So I'm going to just create a, uh, a private variable that will handle that as well. So private, and it will be the same, uh, JSON data class. And then I'm just going to call it so I'm going to call it, right? So it, it is a class variable, right? Of this class. Perfect. So all I, oh, I, I could have actually made it down here on the fly. And I'll show you what that looks like, too. Let's just do that so I don't have to, like, because I'm not going to be using it outside of, of this functionality anyways for now at least for this example I won't be so I'm just gonna remove that and I'll use it right here just like this so this then equals and this is where the um, utility comes in you just type just on utility there it is and from JSON file right And then it asks for what type of data it's going to be, which is going to be this. And then, of course, the string that you're going to be converting from, which is this URL right here. What that's really supposed to do is convert the URL, the data, into an actual um, object for us to use. So now I should be able to go down here and say debug dot log and let's log out the uh, let's log out the this the shop name which is I guess it's gonna be player name is, is what we called it right. Um, let's do another log so we'll log out the list of, of balls as well. You can see balls show up so balls we'll save and we'll quickly go to unity and we'll start our tested i just have a camera to be honest with you there's nothing else in here so i'll just drop it on my camera and then it, i need my url which is this And we'll go ahead and run. All right, so we have an error, which I'm glad we got this error. I'm not sure if you can see it. 
It says here, argument, exception, JSON, parse, error, invalid value. Um, it says, utility.parse from JSON string type. Mm -hmm -hmm. What it says here? And this is an easy fix. You guys might have also done it wrong. I'm going to show you exactly what we did wrong. All right. Well, now that we have our error, um, as you can see down here, um, it's clearly telling us that the data that we're sending into our parsing, which is happening right here, is not a valid JSON data. And technically, it's not. Technically, it's just a URL. All we're sending is a URL. We're not actually sending a JSON file. So if the file was local, you know, that probably could have worked. But it's not which is what this video is about using the web. So I do apologize for staring you off into the wrong direction, but um, it's a great way to learn. So you understand exactly what, what you're doing. So we cannot call it like this. You obviously have to download the data and then um, manipulate it, get what you need, and then send it through this channel. And then it will work. So let's do that. Let's remove it from our start because we know that's not going to work. Instead, um, we can just create a private variable here that's going to handle it. Actually, um, it's going to be an I enumerator. That's not how you spell that, <laughs> but that is I enumerator. And we're going to call this get data right and in here it's just gonna handle getting that data let's oh let's go ahead and copy this and just put it in here actually we gotta say uh, start quarantine boom boom we're done right now this is just giving us a red line because we haven't returned anything yet. Or I'm sorry, we haven't yield return. So we have to do that, right? Um, so next thing is um, accessing the www, which is the uh, basically the web. <laughs> and what I like to do is that's maybe like a lowercase www, okay? And then just say new. Now you're downloading the data, okay, guys? That's all you're doing. Uh, and then the JSON data right there. The JSON uh, URL. Looking good so far. So now we have to wait for it to to wait uh, to download. <laughs> wait for it to wait. <laughs> Wait for it to download. I can't talk today. I haven't had any coffee, so don't hate me. So all we're saying is that let's wait for this underscore www to finish downloading. Now our red line is gone because we've done our yield. So once it's actually done downloading now, we can do if, because we got to check, guys. We got to make sure if our underscore www dot error so we're checking if it has an error if that error is equal to null that means we ain't got no error bruh that's what it means simple simple as that at that point dudes and do that we go ahead and call this function to process our data and we're going to send it the results which will then be underscore www dot text so what we got from processing that data easy peasy of course the great programming practice here is now we need a if it's not if, if we do have an error sort of um, log something to say hey, you got an error Otherwise, we kind of just stand still and be like, hey, it's not working, right? So, oops. Close that up, and we'll say in here, 
oops, something, or yeah, something went wrong. And as soon as we call this, I actually want to do another log. And I'll say in here, processing data. Please wait. <laughs> All right, so processing data, please wait. Oops, something went wrong. Um, you can kind of see the flow now. And this, I can actually bet some money on it. This should work. And you should be able to get all the data you want and to loop through here and get the um, single items. Where is it? To get each individual items for your ball as well. I'll show you how to do that quickly before I wrap up the video. But let's go back to Unity. Let's see if it's processed. We got no errors on our script. Just waiting for Unity here to finish up. All right, no errors on our script, and we'll go ahead and run it. We got our full set of uh, data here. You can see the name is Ball Shop, and then this list. Uh, we're not getting each individual item, but you can see it's the list of on um, Ball list, and it came back positive. So I'll show you really quick how you can loop through and get each individual items. Recall that you named this item here ball list because we're going to have to tap into that real quick. So the ball list is a class item of ball list and the name is balls. And then here we're retrieving balls. So to loop through and get these individual items, uh, you, just, you, you just need a for each loop, for each, and then you want to say this okay ball list because that's what it is so you're basically saying for e each of these elements each of these classes here so for each that um create a, a reference to it i just call mine x and then in and of course this the actual ball list so for all of these elements inside of that, you can just go ahead and loop through now and do something with them. Um, the same thing you would do with the images. Uh, you can send that into another I enumerator to kind of like download them separately, whatever it is you need to do. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to log them out. So let's just log out a few items so you see that it does work. Um, so x dot uh, name, right? Um, x dot, what else did we have? Uh, I think free was one of them. Mm -hmm. And then let's just do another one. Uh, what else is on there? Name, free, we'll do description, right? Description. We'll save and go back. Once Unity loads here, we should see both of our uh, sets of balls should pop up, uh, this one and this one. All right, so let's see what we got. Unity loaded, and we got all of our data here. Um, the name, Bomb Frenzy, no, and then check out the app. That was the first one. Bomb Frenzy, was it free? No. And the description was check out the app. Um, next after that, the name is Geometric Ball, yes, and a large ball. So this was the name, yes, is it free, and it's a large ball. So you see, guys, we are good. Everything is working as promised. And again, I am pretty sure you guys just grasp that um one thing i try not to do is fix the mistakes offline because it's a great learning opportunity at the school that i work 
I allow my students to make, I mean, the craziest and dumbest mistakes because it's a great way to learn. All right. So thank you guys again for watching and have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Hey, you should become a part of this positive and educational channel by hitting that subscribe button. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.